Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying something, uh, I guess this one kind of has two names. It can either go by uh, the Bass Crawler or the Glory Bass. I think these have kind of both been developed independently and came out to the same pattern. But the Bass Crawler, which is uh, a pattern from Jim Green is uh, this one that you see before you and I guess maybe the variation or basically the same pattern uh, just take away the cone head and put a thread head here instead is referred to as Weisgerber's uh, Glory Bass and that one was created by Greg Weisberger. All right that's the, all the history I have for this fly so let's uh, get a fresh hook in the vise Let's get started. So I've got on a, I believe this is a five millimeter uh, brass cone head on here. And this one's a copper colored one. And for the hook, I'm using a uh, Talon. And that's a DV314. And size two. And uh, this is also the same as the Gamagatsu uh, model number 314. I believe this is the same hook, just differently branded. And for thread, we're going to be using Danville flat waxed nylon. And in this case, we're going to be using a uh, fluorescent orange to tie this one. So we'll start off, I'm going to put a base layer of thread. Start off just behind the cone. And we want to come down into the bend a little bit. And we're just kind of making a base so that we can seat our uh, weed guard in here. Cut off that tag end there. We'll take that back up just in behind the bead. Now I haven't completely covered the thread or the hook shank, which is fine. Next I'm going to take a piece of 50 pound monofilament and I just want to burn one end of this so I'll just take a lighter and we'll just kind of burn the end of that like we're doing a uh, shrimp eye or something like that and I'm going to take the tag and we're just going to seat that through the vise Make sure that you got it in there that's not impeded. And we'll stick that balled up end underneath the cone. And that'll kind of fill that space in there a little bit. It's also going to just allow the uh, mono to be gripped a little bit better. I don't think there's any worry of it coming out. And then we'll just wind down. And we want to kind of get more or less close touching turns for the thread down into the bend. And you wanna just kind of try and make sure that you keep the monofilament on top of the hook shank. Kind of has a tendency to roll. And then we'll take that thread back up in behind the bead. And we'll let that hang. Okay, so we'll take the tag end. And we'll just kind of pull that somewhat tight. We'll go in the back of our scissors cut that off so just cut it off so that it's level with the eye of the hook and usually at this point I'll just burn this other end as well so we're going to do the same thing just want to put a little bit of a flame careful that you don't burn your thread your fly will definitely fall apart so we just put another little ball on there just give it a second to uh, melt on there and cool down. I'm going to take a pair of flat pliers and I'm just going to put a bit of a kink into that monofilament. Kind of give it a bit of a pull just so that when it sits in that bead it's nice and secure there. 
and that'll help kind of catch and secure the monofilament when it, with that little bump on the end. It'll give it a little bit of extra security so it's not going to go anywhere. You don't have to worry about your weed guard falling apart. So for the tail on these, I like to use this uh, barred rabbit zonker. This one's a Montana Fly Company one. And I would have to say those are the nicest packaged zonkers on the market. They put them on a on a card and they trim them to five inches a piece and ten strips per bag. It's, it's actually a fairly good deal if you can find them. My local store used to carry them. They don't anymore, unfortunately. So luckily I was able to stock up before they went out, but they have a nice range of colors. If you don't have the Montana, you can always look at some of the hairline product. It's fairly good as well. It's just not quite as nicely packaged. All right, so we've just tied down that rabbit strip, kind of pulled all that hair back so we're not trapping too much of it. And you just want to kind of try and pull that hair up on top just so it doesn't pull over to the side too much. You can kind of see here how it's kind of pulled under a bit. It's not a big deal. We'll just leave that. Uh, next, I'm going to take in a standard sized Estaz. And this one's in orange just to kind of complement the. Uh, color of the tail and we'll tie that in along the hook shank and we'll put our thread back right up in behind the cone you kind of pull it forward a little bit just so that it gets locked right at the cone and then we're going to wrap that forward and I like to kind of pull that back just a little bit with each wrap That'll make it a little more dense and kind of help the uh, fibers stick out a little better so you get a bit of a fuller fly. And I do this in a number of different colors. I do olives, purples, blacks, blues, um, anything you can think of basically. It's a nice overall pattern. I uh, also do probably the most popular one I do is in a white with a, a barred zonker, black and white barred zonker. There. So we tied that Estaz in behind the bead and just trimmed that off right behind or the cone rather. So now we're going to take this weed guard we built and we're going to just pop it inside that bead comb. I'm going to give that a few really tight wraps just to make sure it's locked down. Ouch! Alright, that looks pretty good. Poked my finger there. Alright, so next we're going to take one of these bass skirts. So this is one that I've got. It's got uh, orange tips, chartreuse middle, and a little bit of uh, black speckle in there. It's a pretty nice one. So I'm just going to fold that right in half. I'm just going to come through the middle of that. Cut that with my scissors. Now I've got two. I'll save one for my next fly. And I'm going to wrap this one on right here. So I like to just kind of Lay it on top about halfway, and then we just wrap those two ends around so that they meet near the bottom. And then we'll put one or two loose wraps of thread, and then we'll give it a crank, just to kind of pull those uh, that the legs in kind of thing so that they suck into the cone a little bit. And then we pass on to the bottom. You can push that bead down if it gets stuck up a little bit. We'll add a few more wraps. And really tighten it down there. With this 210 denier thread, you can 
be a little more brutish with it. It's a little more forgiving than an 8-aught or 6-aught thread. Now, just want to pull all those legs back when you whip finish this so that they don't get trapped. And now let's put a second one on this just to make sure. So that's our double whip finish. Trim that out. Okay, so next, I'm just gonna pull these legs all forward. And I like to just wriggle them back, back and forth here. And one other thing I usually do is I just come in here and I'll cut out the uh, bit of this tag end here. It's a bit of an awkward spot. If you get it going, you can kind of rip it off. You want to try not to cut any of the S does that you've piled in there. There, that kind of lets the S does pop back up. And then you get this nice kind of flare with these legs here. So when you got that going through the water, you've got a nice profile. Nice uh, jiggy bass lure. All right, that's that's it. That's the uh, bass crawler, AKA Wise Gerber's Glory Bass. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.